So welcome to the first systemic GE workshops <coughs> under tropical conditions <laughs> in Great Britain. <laughs> yeah, to build up a shared reality, the complex uh, project, we somehow start uh, to do it. Um, what I already told you is that we will tape everything that's part of the contract. Um, I guess uh, after we have met each other in person a bit, I will give you an outlet what the options from the topics are, and then uh, to give you a first sense what are the concepts I developed the last 30 years, and which of those you want uh, to know about more. And I certainly know that uh, you also want, are used more to do training interaction, and so we will not do much interaction. But my first uh, purpose is to give you a sense about the concepts and approaches. But I also want to give you an understanding of my style of consulting. So I thought uh, we could do two, basically two um, settings. One is that I explain you my concepts along PowerPoint slides. You will get all the slides, you will get also the videos and the audios. So only take notes if you want to take them for yourself, for your self-organization. And the other setting uh, is that I uh, I will give supervision or do consulting or pieces of psychotherapy here. I hope that uh, the concepts are eliciting questions that fit the concepts, so that these, con uh, these uh, dialogues can show you how I work with the concepts. But if I'm doing dialogue, certainly uh, to give a service to the person who offers uh, to dialogue with me is a first priority. I also will need some time to c come back into the English language because I usually do not work in English and uh, my re retraining now is some hours only. I, I hope you, if you don't understand anything, tell me. Um, and yeah. Um, my, I tell you some, a bit of, about my per personal purpose. My personal purpose is uh, I stopped teaching in, in German. I'm, I've become 65 this year, so I have so many other roles to fulfill that training and teaching is my past. I in reenacted this role in order to bring my concepts into the English language area. And I guess when we are, I will have done these two here, it's, it's finished. Maybe uh, in the English version I will do in the one or other country again, but all over my carry, career is finished on that. And I also came here uh, to build up our connections on an idea of an international uh, organizational network in the perspective of TA. I personally am interested in having an easy network. No, not, no hierarchy, no formalisms, no money making, uh, professional exchange. That's mm. what I'm interested in. And I'm finished with money making, so I'm in a comfortable <laughs> position. I'm interested in spreading uh, my gifts and my developments. Yeah, one of my teachers is Milton Erickson. I've studied, I was lucky to study with him a year before he died. If you know the book, My Voice Goes With You, I'm Siegfried in there. <laughs> it's <laughs> 1979. And so storytelling. Bill Holloway from the TA uh, 
scene also introduced me into guided imagery and also a bit storytelling. He was an excellent series, but also a storyteller. And so I'm doing with storytelling since more than 30 years. And this is one chapter uh, of what we can do here, how, how we work in organizations with inner images and stories. Thank you. And these two guys are Frida and Andre, students of the University for Education in Heidelberg, uh, master students in media education, and <laughs> doing practical work in cooperation with our institute. And this is a part of our cooperation, so they do the taping. So, um, I uh, I don't know how much you know about my my life development. Should I tell you some some things about that? So I, I studied ec economy. Then I did my uh, philosophical doctor in psychology and adult education. And I was a psychotherapist for many years. I had about 25 level 1 candidates in TAE and 6 level 2 candidates in TAEs. So TAE was one of my main tracks, but I'm, I also engage in group dynamics, Rogerian therapy, Gestalt therapy, body language, psychodrama, and then uh, a next major track was systemic work. For many years, systemic family therapy with uh, m families with psychotic members, with together with a colleague, with a, a famous family therapist, Gunther Weber. Uh, we had together for many years a psychotherapy and psychotherapy training institute. And I learned a lot from that. But then it, uh, the perspective of psychotherapy was too narrow for me, and I and I'm my roots also economy, and I come from a region in German, who people say people are naturally very economically oriented Schwaben, <laughs> like the Scottish, <laughs> and you have to do something with your genes. <laughs> And this was a time in the uh, 80s where many companies uh, got interested in psychology. They can use in companies and GA and systemic ideas uh, have been very much welcome. So uh, it was, the doors have been open to me to work in organizations. And for many years I did organizational consulting and team workshops and uh, learned to orient myself in this world. But then uh, the major track turned out to be trained professionals. And uh, I gave up my clinical career and only turned into doing work with professionals in the organizational world. Those who work with people and professions and people and organizations and not so much people and private history. But it's all tied together. The question is, what is foreground, what is background? I do not do not say it. this is not the case anymore and this is now new. And as I said yesterday to somebody, s somehow I'm, I have a state to be a psychotherapist, so I take care of the soul of people. Mm -hmm. But from the perspective how they act in economy and in organizations and not how they act in private life. And I think um, the soul in economy and the soul in organizations is very important for people to keep their soul healthy as private persons. There's an uh, interconnection. Uh, today uh, we have a, a private academy on set. We're doing coaching training. I'm also the president of, a, of the biggest coaching association in Germany in the organizational field. 
we do organizational development, we do systemic consulting, and we do it on a two years training basis, 12 times, three days. And people from all areas, all companies, all big companies, small companies, profit companies, non-profit companies, and they all, all learn together. And so we develop the specific didactics that people uh, uh, who are um, very diverse can learn together and help each other to profit from their perspectives and their knowledge. And this works wonderfully. And we have uh, a network now, a professional network from people who went through our programs of more than 2,000, 2000 professionals and they are very active on an internet basis and exchange jobs and collaborations and ideas and questions. And uh, we have about 350 students at a time right now. 15 teachers, men and women from with different specializations combined in programs. And I'm, I step back, I'm in the process of building up a foundation uh, and making from, uh, I'm quite far in the process of making from a personal culture, a profe uh, institution culture and giving it into a public property so that it can be self-transcendent and will survive me hopefully. And this is my main focus, what we can do to spread this culture. We love uh, to live our culture. So people who are with us as uh, trainers, they are uh, usually free. They are all are freelancers who have their own businesses but work as teachers. And uh, the employees are many, many years with us. So we are a, a stable, sustained uh, company and now we find out how how we can uh, what can we do that this will live longer when I will live not anymore or not feel present anymore this is the stage in my life and one of the things is that we think about we, we, we tried many corporations with uh, associations companies universities and I'm quite frustrated on that because the other part usually is not doing its job and so we wait and wait and we invest or uh, ambivalent should we invest more and um, uh, and do uh, things the others should be responsible for and so we retired a big and a bit and decided to develop what we have and what we have the hands on to uh, to prepare it in a way that people who want to take it can take it very easily so and we do internet based projects that people can uh, who are trained with us and also others can pick up some materials from the internet and use them for their own practice make it very easy if you are personally competent to use all the the cult professional cultural stuff we developed in the last 30 years. That's my personal situation. If you have any questions, though, every time. Uh, it's not, I, I found it not easy to build up an international network. We tried that from the coaching association. Uh, we tried it with EMCC, that you probably know, the mm -hmm. David Magenson and Sheffield people and, uh, and many others. But this was not possible, it did not function, they have been too big, as the TA organizations are too, too administrative, complicated, it's not working. And they also have coaching in the organizational field, but life coaching and kind of uh, psychotherapy, small psychotherapy. And uh, it's, it's, it was difficult to build up high organizational standards with associations who also have the therapeutic approach because they think, because they know people, they also understand how people enact organizations. And it's 
it's difficult really to come to a, a network with high standards in competence in understanding organizations. So we gave up somehow. Uh, the German association is running wonderfully, but we do not know how to come to a new network. And one of the chances I see in, in our trial, whether it is called TA on the end, I don't know. It's not very much important to me. I think the um, world is changing. New associations should not be focused on classical schools. They should be focused on uh, issues society is struggling with and integrating everybody who is competent to contribute. And make it easy, not 10 years of training. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we could do now as the first step is just go through the outline I to, to each uh, possible chapter. I give you a sense what it could be, and then we'll have a break. And the next, what I will do, because my experience is people... Uh, from their soul understand better what I want to tell them if I show them how I work. Mm -hmm. So the next I will do here is just doing a, a consultation or a supervision or however you want to call it, a dialogue, a learning dialogue on any level with somebody of you and so somebody can all can start to think what it could be about to start with. Then we, we can it's not only the content of the concepts I want to share with you, because the concepts are only a part of culture. And my style, that is uh, uh, my personal version of the style we developed in my institute, this is the other part of the culture. And if, it, if it's not living in doing, the concepts are irrelevant. So this, uh, these are the next two steps, going through the outline, then having a break, and then having a, a dialogue here, and discussing this dialogue from any perspective you are interested in. And we will switch back and forth between these two formats uh, in these three days. Mm -hmm. And w if, if we do the part narrative, TA, how I call it, working with inner images and things like that, then we also uh, will have uh, guided imagery and exchange and exercises in intuition on on told images. images. So this is a third uh, setting then here. With this, does it sound as if it will fit what you expected to meet here? Good. So I have a, a paper version of the overview for each of you that you uh, can look at it and also we'll have uh, uh, on the uh, we have it here on the PowerPoint charts. Uh, what, one of the things I will demonstrate you when we do the dialogue is a concept I love and do in every group. I visit my groups at my institute once a year. And I always do that introduction. Uh, how we give, how we introduce the other person into my style. So that we don't just step in and after half an hour we find out that the styles are not understood or going in different directions. And you can have it much easier if you uh, explain it to each other, because you are experienced for 30, 40, 50 years in your style. Why shouldn't you tell the other person? <laughs> but some people think it's love if you try without knowing in advance. I'm not sure whether <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Does everybody has a, a yes. sheet like this? Good. So I will shortly uh, in the next uh, steps and uh, give you an uh, um, introduction what systemic is from my point of view. 
because systemic is not just interactive, working with groups or interactive, like uh, family therapy is not a setting. It's there are several perspectives together. What for me are the, the systemic perspectives, and I will meta comment a bit on mm -hmm. that. Not too long. Um, and then we have in the broker room communication models. So role model is, is one of many models I've developed in the last 30 years. And uh, communications models is easier to start with. So, and we have, uh, I've come, first we have the cultural encounter, counter model of communication. This is taking an account that if people meet, cultures meet through people. And it's, uh, and we should give up the fiction that two persons, two individual individuals can match very well together because there are many backgrounds of cultures that have to be tied together and it's uh, much more effort than usually you think. And, and if you have a communication model that is not only psychological and uh, privately personal, but takes this in account and you have different questions on how uh, how to match cultures together when people meet. This is, uh, and I combine this with um, with uh, further development of the shifts models of uh, the discount levels and show you how I further developed it and why. One of the problems is that I will not explain all these uh, TA concepts uh, I refer to. Mm -hmm. just, we can do this mm -hmm. here. I, uh, if somebody is not at all uh, familiar, for example, with shift concepts, please tell me. I will not. Uh, I, I cannot compensate for that. But we'll mm -hmm. find a way how we can work with it as it is. And then we have another. Communication model, I call this as a dialogue model of communication. And this means a, a dialogue between conscious uh, technical uh, organization of an encounter and the unconscious uh, narrative organization, intuitive organization of an encounter. And whenever people uh, meet, certainly intuition uh, does a lot in shaping the shared reality. And this is also true in professional life and in organizations. So it uh, should be a professional competence to be uh, in dialogue within myself between these levels and be, uh, be in dialogue with each other to build up a communication culture and a company that is not only officially working on the technical level and the rest is done somehow intuitively, mm -hmm. but that these other levels are part of the communication culture and not a private part besides that, on a part of professional competence. And this communication model is, is a basis to think in these terms, in these perspectives. And then we have a third model. This is uh, three theatre metaphor. We have uh, developed uh, many concepts uh, that do not afford uh, any psychological knowledge in order to talk about communication, in order to talk about personality, that everybody can immediately tune into discussing personality without needing any one-on-one -on -one in any kind of psychology. And the theater metaphor is wonderful. So um, if we exchange each other in which roles I, I'm very often, on which stages am I very often, do, how do I act on these stages? And if we are mirroring each other how we experience that, then the person immediately can, in a metaphorical way, tell something about the psychological perspective of professional life. For example, you can come to the conclusion the role is okay, it's not the role what I always thought, it's the stage that's not functioning. I'm, there are, the stages are too big for me, my soul is not uh, at home on these big stages, I need smaller stages, or vice versa. 
or the stage is okay, but the role is not okay. The role would be okay, but the play is not okay. I usually let myself be engaged in. And I, I guess immediately you get a sense that to talk about these things is personal, professional oriented personal personality psychology besides psychology. And the theater metaphor helps us very much to to work with that and this helps us in organizations where people today not are very interested to have psychologists. They want to talk about uh, how they are doing in their roles and in their business. This was a theater metaphor. Then um, the key word, maybe because you are here, this is the role concept in the table. Um, I explain uh, the personality concept of roles and why I developed that first from ego state ideas and why I chose the three worlds personality concept, professional world, organizational world, private world or a four world concept as Günther Mohr made of it and for me Personality has a lot to do with professional competence. You cannot be a mature professional personality without knowing how to do your job. And so I in include in questions of professional personality the question of developing competence. And uh, you cannot be a competent person and an integrated person when you are in an organization uh, that, that has a culture that does not match your personal culture. So the question of matching uh, is very important when you want to understand where and how you are competent or not, or you find yourself as a personality or not. And, and this also needs to have an, somehow of understanding of the personality of an organization and how we can find out, and this is certainly in many respects an intuiti intuitive process. But <coughs> people control their life out of these intuitive processes, and so we should bring them into the um, uh, dialogue on purpose and have concepts how to supervise it. And this is, uh, I've put it in the chapter, Role Concept of Personality. Uh, I, I jump to eight because this, this are some additions which uh, are interesting but do not directly fit into, into these personality concepts. This is the driver concept, you know, certainly T.B. Keller's five drivers and uh, 15 years ago also I have to each driver designed um, counter dynamic. Some drive uh, some people use counter dynamic of their driver and then the, the driver is disguised if you don't know that there is a counter dynamic. For example, a hurry up person can be frozen and very calm, but it's a hurry up dynamic, it's a counter dynamic. And if you want to <coughs> make a frozen person alive by saying I hurry up a bit, then you have a problem, a driver problem. And that it's only a small piece of work, it's not, it's not very systematic, but it's interesting to have this point. Um, then there's a concept, I've um, put the topic on it, uh, um, identity beliefs. You may know the third pass, Im as the third great impasse work from the Guldings, it's on being. And this is one of the roots of this concept. I, I think many major problems have to do with beliefs about identity. And I've developed uh, approaches how to work with a belief in our identity. If somebody believes he's a, a, an alcoholic, he might become dry, but then he's a dry alcoholic. Mm. And to change beliefs on identity is an extra procedure. And sometimes people go for change on behavior and attitude level over and over again, but stay with their belief ab about identity. 
And it's so easy to help identity to be changed if you focus on it. And I've developed a method for that. If you are interested, that's also a small piece of work. And another small piece of this work is uh, uh, what is especially in organizations very helpful is two types of uh, relationship preferences. That's uh, the goal-oriented people and the relationship-oriented people. And what happens when they meet each other and do not understand that the other person is uh, coming from the other direction. And some major conflicts in organizations can really not be solved, but brought uh, forward a lot only by understanding we are working from different basic uh, relationship preferences. And the longer they fight, the more they get in, into polar, polarity, and then it's, they produce problems without any end. Also a small piece of work. And the other thing is also with uh, excitement management. There are people, if it should be essential, they heat a lot and make a lot of excitement. And there are other people who are, when it should be essential, they calm down and get very quiet. If those two types or types of organizations meet each other, we have a matching problem. And uh, it's also a simple concept that sometimes is very, very helpful. So she said, uh, just concepts nobody else uh, teaches, if you're interested. I, I made, uh, certainly I cannot do all these concepts um, profoundly here, but give you a sense what it means, and if you are interested in, uh, you can read more or do more on it. So this was on the part of personality. Then my work on responsibility culture, one of the mo major topics in our institute development right now, because con uh, confusion and avoidance of uh, responsibility systems and dialogues on responsibility is a major disease of our times in organizations. Mm -hmm. And many, many problems you can address by having a good concept on dealing with responsibility. And you might, this might remind you on shift, symbiosis, passive behavior and all these things, and it's coming from that, but I tra had to transform many things to uh, bringing away from a pathological oriented approach to an uh, eye level, equal eye level approach in organizations. And uh, we, we are working on internet training that people uh, can, uh, there's a case and it's defined what symbiosis and um, shifting responsibility and shifting discomfort and and all these things are, and then I, uh, I have case situations with options where people get a feeling, how do I feel when I resist what this person could do? Why is this good or not good? And then we gave answers and they can think about their concepts on responsibility. And uh, today we have a lot of confu confusions about responsibility. We do not have the right concept for that, but we have an competent invitation into dialogues on responsibility. Another concept uh, I got with Klaus Jäger to guess as a European scientific award in, I guess, 78 or so was, is on dilemmata. These are problem situa situations in which the problem is constructed in a way that there is no solution or no satisfying solution. And most of the long-standing severe problems of people are dilemma problems and you within the logic of the, you cannot source them you have to find meta stances to overcome and uh, I've developed approaches and concepts to spell that out a bit and it's um, it's more than the double bind theory of Gregory Bateson and it's less as a complicated logic, logical type series we have today. Even Matthias Vaga von Kiebet, I don't know whether you know it uh, internationally, is a very famous German logic professor who is also dealing with dilemmata. But he has, he came out, 
came up now with 72 types of logical dilemma time. And it's, it's a bit too much. And I developed a process model that uh, you can handle intuitively. If you identify specific feelings, you know you are in a dilemma. You don't have to analyze them logically. And this is a dilemma circle. And then is a, a big, a large part of my work uh, is what I call narrative TE. Uh, the one part of it is um, enlarging the concepts of intuition from Eric Burns. There's a lot of very useful stuff and it's limited. There are some first developments I made and I took uh, ideas from the Jungian psychology for that. Um, so if you're interested in does somebody of you know McCormick's book, uh, uh, t um, Intuition and yeah. Transaction of t Intuition? Or I don't know. Yeah, it's up there. Ah, okay, but not many. So only the, the elder states women and men, <laughs> not. Okay, it's very. Uh, you, but you know that TA came from studies on intuition? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's a very. And, it's very useful to go back to the origins of TA mm -hmm. and why and how Byrne developed the TA that was appropriate in the 60s and 70s of the last century, but not, no longer today in many respects. And how the same perspective can help us today to, to develop a new TA. And especially I work with uh, uh, background images, uh, the inner images. Uh, the idea is that you have millions of experiences and images during your life, and some of them you uh, aufbewahren, that heißt, you, you store. Yeah? And 99 point you don't store. And the idea is you still store souls who have meaning to you, who, which reflect part of your being, of your, the character of your soul. And it's not difficult to bring these pictures up, these images. And if you gather these images and put them together and go into an intuitive mirroring dialogue with colleagues, you can profound, very easily profoundly talk about nature of the human being and main preferences and main topics in life. It's a very easy and, non, and also non-psychological approach. You can do it in every organization, you can do it with engineers, with business people, without <coughs> any interest in psychology. If you use the right words, they find it totally natural to talk about. And you can do it in respect to am I on the right way in my professional life development, either per person and profession, or you can use it in the way am I in the right company. Is my personal mythology and the culture of the company, is this matching enough? Can I, is it possible in this context to become what I, what I could be? And that's a big topic certainly, but by images it's can be made quite easy to handle. So, and around this, we always work with metaphors and storytelling. And uh, Vanita English once said, uh, I, I asked her, I made a, a big interview with Vanita also more, 25 years ago, and I asked, Vanita, what do you think if Eric Brown has lived longer, 30 years, in what direction would he have developed TA, and she thought about that. I guess more in the direction of Jungian psychology, how people develop their mythology. And somehow TA too often is stuck in negative mythology called scripts. So, yeah. Eight we have had already. And then I always uh, am interested in uh, a profession is as good as professional associations and professional self transcendence cultures. So I've 
uh, came up with a model for supervision, the Toblerone model. Model. I don't know whether somebody ever read that. It's I had it. In, I guess on the TH journal once. Uh, when the European, I, I've been the head of the training uh, committee of D DGTA, the German uh, association when IATA wanted to separate from ITAA and IATA didn't have a, a examinations perspective and system so they took over the one we developed in Germany and I was the one who made the major design so the European uh, exam design is going back to this point in 1981 I guess and the question uh, uh, for uh, an association is, it's important not to be Id identified with circles or errors or Eric Byrne once said, he said a lot of things that have been not so fruitful if it's not a game formula, it's not game or, uh, and a book later uh, Drama tri Triangle was very different and everybody says Game formula and drama triangle fit together. I've uh, worked that through theoretically. It doesn't fit together. There are two different concepts who cannot be uh, logically linked to each other, for example. So we have a lot of uh, m habits in our associations that keep us stuck mentally and in our uh, habits of how how we understand ourselves as TA people. And I all, I, and I wrote, I wrote several articles on helping people to ed identify not with content, but with, for example, a professional culture of TA and exchanging contents according to the developments of times. And these are questions uh, uh, that are submitted on, under point nine. So, this is the manual. <laughs> I ready to eat everything? I guess no, it's not. We, we cannot get, get through everything and do interactional work. But you, you get a sense of it and you have the paper. So, uh, you, you help me to control our process, what we should enlarge and what we should make very short and switch to something different and not, not to eat too much from one. Uh, and then are not hungry and open to something uh, different. Mm -hmm. So it's more the idea. I lead you through. Um, how do you say? If, if you have many dishes, or the, um, a banquet. A banquet, mm -hmm. and I explain you what what are the dishes, and you decide. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Be reluctant not to eat too much from one, but really get the taste of everything. And my idea is. Um, if you you get the sense that this is the most important thing and develop your own things on it and first develop your own thinking and practice with this sense or you want to know more and it's written down everything. I'm in the comfortable situation today that I've written many books and all this is at least in German written down and we have translated many of the things already and if when I know that English-speaking people want to have more, then I invest in translating. That's not a problem. Or we work together in translating, or whatever. So everything is free, no, is without any money. We have a, we are a open source company. We, we give away everything. It's important that it's, it's getting fruitful.